Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. I'm very excited to have you here with me today. Thank you for joining. Today I want to take you a little bit and explain the filters, how filters work in N8N. Because starting out and moving from make.com, this was very uh, tricky for me to understand as I didn't find, I didn't find the, the way to do filters at, the, at first, okay? So we'll delve deep in that today and I'll explain how to do that. Uh, but before I start, I want to uh, mention that uh, if you guys want the uh, workflow for this lesson and for past lessons, make sure to uh, go to my store and I've made a, uh, uh, a new item for all my N8N automations, okay? So these will be updated as we go. We already have uh, eight of them here that are that you can uh, that you can get at a very discounted price. I also have my N8N beginners course. If you feel like you need to strengthen your basics, I recommend this uh, one as it will help you a lot. Okay, uh, I'll put the links in the description below. So let's go ahead and dive right deep. So okay, I'm in N8N right now. Uh, I'm going to create workflow in this top right button. So this is the first work, the workflow here. And this is the first node we have, which is should be a trigger node. Okay. If we click the plus on this, it will give us what triggers you want. And it tells us what a trigger is. So a trigger is a step that starts your workflow. So it's step zero. Okay. There's many, many triggers here. Uh, I'll go, uh, I went through them in my course. Uh, make sure to check that out. Let's start with the manual one. Okay. So the manual one is when clicking test, this will trigger. Okay. This will not trigger on its own. You can even, you cannot even activate it from here. So let us first uh, get some data. So I am going to uh, go to my Google sheets and then get rows. Okay. And then I am going to go to this one, which is like a sample sales uh, uh, sheet. And I'm going to grab the, uh, the ID from here. So this is the ID of the sheet. Okay. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to say select by ID. I'm going to select this one and then uh, I'm going to select sheet one. Okay. So if we click test here, uh, so we can see all of the rows that are fetched, 17 rows, because we didn't put any filters here, it just grabs all the rows, <clears throat> which is exactly what we need. Now, I'm going to quickly jump into make just to explain the thing. So in make, it's very simple, right? Uh, you can uh, create a node here, for example, let's do set variables, for example, and then let's do another one here set variable. Okay. So filters in make are pretty simple, right? You see this wrench button, you click on it, set up a filter. This is how filters work in make. It's this line where you name the filter, you put the condition and you put, uh, uh, if it's text or number or whatever, and you put the condition, right? That's how filters work in make. And it's simple. <clears throat> and when I started with make, I went here and I st <laughs> and I started clicking on this line and it didn't work. I mean, I was like, okay, how do I put filters? I, I mean, I want to put filters here. I was tied up with this notion that the filter is going to be uh, on this line just because I'm coming from make. Okay. But in N8N, it's quite different. In N8N, the filters is a node on itself, right? You can search for a filter and you can see this is the filter node. So. This is the filter node. So a no a filter in N8N is a node on its own. You, you don't put it on the line. You don't you don't use it. You don't put it like here in. There's no range. There's no. Uh, if you put a condition here, it will show up here. No. In here in N8N, it's a node on its own. Now, since we have the node now here, let's go ahead and see it. So uh, the node is pretty similar to make. So you have a condition here. And you have, if it's uh, the type of variable, right? And the conditions change based on this type of variable. And what do you need it to be? Okay. So here we can see here from our Google Sheets, we have the source, which is a text. You see this A, that means it's a string. So it's a text. 
and you see this hash that means it's a number okay and we have and we have the rest are as strings as well so <clears throat> let's say i want to grab all of the amounts see how i clicked and drag here okay i want to grab all the amounts that are since it's a number and i can i can click on the number one that are and it's different here because here it's different because of stacks and here it's different because of numbers so in number we get we get things like greater than less than okay so if i say it's greater than uh let's say five or let's say 10 okay so i want to grab everything that is greater than 10. let's test so here we get 13 out of 17. okay let's see if we want to get 20 test we get 10 so as you can see the numbers here it's uh it's grabbing only the things that are above than 20 and it's not equal because there's something here i think greater than or equal okay so this is filtered like this is in a nutshell we got 17 and uh, we the incoming is 17 and the output is only 10 so we're already filtering okay we're already filtering now let's say I want to let's remove this and uh, delete this and I want to uh, put this source here so the source and now this is a source so this is text so I have to select the string okay so what I want is the string to uh, if it contains Amazon okay now if you have capital if you have capital letters and you don't know exactly uh, if it's capital or not just you can easily put here dot to lowercase then it will lowercase everything that is in here okay then in here you can just put Amazon and then let's test so we, we, we got back four and 13 are discarded okay and as you can see here there's kept and discarded right there's kept and discarded uh, only what's kept gets uh, moved to the next uh, to the next node okay only what's kept discarded you don't you don't this, these don't don't continue okay okay so in the string we have if it exists uh, if it does not exist if it's empty uh, if it starts with if it end with and you can even put put a regex here you can you can put a regular expression in here just like you just like in make okay and in the date now if you, i don't have a date here but if you have uh, because the date here is set up as a string not as a date so make sure it's date so if you have a date then you can put before or after if you have a boolean uh, which is true or false then you can say if it's true and if it's false and you have also the array and object so all of these filters are very very strong filters if uh, if done correctly okay now we can you can add more conditions right you can add as many conditions and you as you want now the only difference that you should uh, the only thing that you should keep in mind is that there's an and and or now what does what do these mean these means that if you put and that all of these conditions need to be true for the thing for for whatever item that is in here goes next okay if one of them is false then it gets discarded okay uh, and if you choose or then it goes one by one and as soon as it finds one it goes right as soon as it finds one as soon as one of these condition is true then it gets uh, it gets moved to the cap so it only needs one condition to be true rather than if we put and then it requires all conditions to be true in order for for this item to proceed in the kept uh, in the kept column okay uh so the and what if what if for example let's uh let's delete those and uh let's put like this okay and test as you can see the kept is zero and all of them are discarded and we don't have any data so what if i want this to output always so you can say always output so i have something right so and then if I run this, it will output an empty JSON. This is just for you in the next node. If you want to check if this is empty or not, always make sure to always output. Then in the next node, you can say if it's empty, then uh, then do something. Okay. <clears throat> 
okay then if we do that then there is no kept as you can say if we do this then at least there's one kept which is an empty one okay make sure to have that in mind uh so yeah this is like like this is it this is the filter node okay uh, in 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 n8n the filter is a node on its own it's not a line don't click on the line and once you do the filter you go in and you have a bunch of conditions that you can put make sure to put the type based on the type of uh, item that you have because if you put a wrong type then it will flag an error okay you can you can check this convert type when required but it doesn't always work okay uh, so yeah, you have all these types and all of these conditions. They are very, very strong when put together, when you chain them together in a way to give you the best result possible. Okay, the filter node is a very, very strong and uh, useful node. I use it in basically most of my workflows, okay? So I encourage you to use it in your future workflows. Okay, so uh, let's see this. Yeah, because we have nothing here. Okay, so now we, uh, sorry, now we get all the Amazon ones, okay? Now what if I want all the Amazon ones that are more than fifty, for example. So as you see, I put and so that means both of these conditions need to be true and then i get only one what if i put or then i get nine of them you know because because only one of these conditions need to be true not both and you can see i have the amount of 12 it's under 50. so keep that in mind when you're testing that you always have that okay now I have only nine left. Now I can uh, I can create another filter if I want and even go further. So I can filter based on whatever nine items are here. I can filter by type, for example, and I say uh, since type is a string, I say contains, and I could put dot to lowercase. And then I say only affiliate, for example. Then I test, and then I have only four out of nine, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, so always name your uh, name your workflows, filters. Save, everything's saved. So in this lesson, we went through filters. We understood how to put them. We understood that they're in a node. We understood that we have we can stack them. We understood that each filter we need to specify the exact type of the data that we're getting. If it's a string, means a text. If it's a number, if it's a date, if it's a boolean, etc. And then we can chain filters together with an and and an or. When we put and, then all conditions need to be true. When we put or, then only one condition needs to be true. And then we can chain uh, node. Uh, the, the filter nodes together, not just one node, but multiple ones. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe, and make sure, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.